I think I'm gonna focus. Ow! Fuck. Hey, you guys, it's Megan, Digital's Megs, whatever you wanna call me. I'm good with it all. <laughs> um, I haven't, you can see my dog. Kiwi, say hi. <laughs> um, I haven't done a tutorial in like, I think it was five months when I was looking at my uh, YouTube last night, so. I personally don't think I'm that good at like voiceovers and tutorials and stuff, but literally every day I get at least like 5 to 20 messages saying tutorials, YouTube, you know, TikTok is kind of hard to follow because you can only do so much on TikTok. So I'm trying to film more because you guys really like it and I want to obviously give you guys what you want, so. Um, let's just get some housekeeping things out of the way. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all that. Depending on when this goes up, I might already be on tour. If not, I'm going on tour um, this month, this summer with Mr. Wives and Lawrence the Band. Very excited. I'll put up the show dates, come to a show, look for the pink haired girl. I'll be there. Also, this is not sponsored, I wish, but this brand, Synpacks, they send me so many cool um, photography stuff, and they're like, hey, we know you're going on tour with the Rainbow Band themselves, Mr. Wives, they're all known for rainbows, and I'm known for rainbows. I mean, literally, look at me, my shirt, my nails. So they're like, hey, can we send you some, like, more camera filters? I was like, yeah, anything you want. So they sent me a shit ton. Uh, like this, do you see, like, how it fractures? whatever that word is. It's hard to show you on my little vlog camera, but I'll just go through a couple because they really are beautiful. Like, oh, that's kind of scary. Like, they sent me a lot. I'm not going to show you them all because it's not sponsored, so if you want to sponsor me, you know the, the deal. This one's like a, well, you can't really see this one because there's no lights going into it, so that was a waste of a second. Oh, this one's cool. It's like just rainbowy kind of. Love it. Anyways, check them out if you want to. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be talking about... My hair is not doing what it's supposed to do today. It's fine. Today we're going to be talking about um, creative concert photography because photography in the music industry does not have to be basic. <sighs> um, people are like, oh, but if I develop my own style and it's kind of like out there, it's not going to blend. Like a band will look at me and be like, oh, I don't want to tour with that person because like doesn't fit their aesthetic. Then it doesn't fit your aesthetic. I understand that where I am at in my career, it's like I have the privilege of turning down people I don't want to work with if they don't fit my aesthetic or anything. And when you're starting out, you don't necessarily have that luxury. So I totally get wanting to tone down your creativity to fit a mass audience of artists and musicians and their record labels. But I really don't care. I feel like a lot of the reason I've been so successful is because I make art. I don't make things to appeal to people, to be like, oh, she fits every genre, let's work with her. I created my own little bubble of photography, which is like combining graphic design, rainbows, everything that I like to create, and people, they notice that. So I feel like that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to be showing you guys how to Photoshop this photo I took of Jack Antonoff at a Bleacher show. He is literally one of the greatest people Literally, every time I meet him, he is so nice. So, and I also love this photo. This photo is actually much easier to, th to edit than you'd think. I know it kind of looks intense. I got that on my TikTok comments. Like, oh, can you post like a more toned down uh, tutorial? Because on TikTok, I do like really quick speed throughs. And I was like, yeah. And then I was looking at the file that I have saved. And I was like, this is like four steps. Like, we can do it. Let's bang it out. Just an example of what I could, just an example of what I can, could, <laughs> Just an example of what I can consider my creative photography. I'm going to put up some examples. It's just music photography that is a little oomphed. You know what I mean? Like, I just stopped recording. Okay. You know how hard it would be to edit every single photo I take for concerts in that kind of out there realm? It would take me all day. And concert photographers, we don't have all day. We literally have the night of a show to get it up and get it to the artist. So, But if you have one or two kind of out there ones in your whole package of photos... That'll make it stand out. So let's jump into it. Okay, so for this particular photo, it's very Photoshop based. I'm actually not really gonna touch um, Lightroom, which makes my job easier sticking in one platform. I don't think I updated to Photoshop 2022, so let's not comment on that. Are we out of the woods yet? Are we out of the woods yet? Out of the woods! All right, so let me pull up my screen recording. Okay, so we have the image up. This is probably not the image you were expecting when I said we're gonna make this photo of Jack. That's because that photo is actually a double exposure. Let me grab the other photo. 
This is the other photo that I use, which you guys probably see more. The way I achieved, um, these are both in camera. I haven't touched them at all, nothing. The way I achieved this photo is a fluke, obviously, because that doesn't look like a normal photo. I also noticed recently that I have a little smudge on my um, camera mirror, so. Alrighty then. Anyways, so it's just a long exposure, and what I did is I took my camera, and I just did the really long exposure, I just went and it just kind of recreated this pattern. There's really no rhyme or reason that I found with my concert photography long exposures because you can't, it's not a normal long exposure where you can have the model stay still and everything move around it. You, what are you gonna tell the artist? Be like, excuse me Jack, can you just stay still? No, so what I do is I just take as many long exposures as I want if I have an idea in my mind um, before the show, and take as many long exposures as I can and then I just cross my fingers and hope when I get home and edit, I'm like, oh, there's a good one. I didn't know what I wanted to do with this photo until I layered it with this photo, which is what we're gonna do right now. Um, so the first thing I do when I'm editing, I will do a four by five crop, and it sucks because I'm thinking in terms of Instagram, what's gonna be the Instagram crop, because that is the conversion, it's either square, crop, or landscape, and um, it is a four by five, and yes, a lot of people are like, oh, but you shouldn't make art that is reliant on Instagram or making it for Instagram and I agree but my clients use this for Instagram so I'm kind of you know used to it by now. This one we're just gonna make it bigger and then Jack gonna bring that old boy in. Um, I also just kind of bring the vertical up a little bit. I don't know I just find the elongation I don't think that's a word uh, looks better in photos so that's what I do. You know, you can do whatever you do. And then I made this photo so long ago, so I'm just using this for reference quick one. What I do next once I layer it the way I want, or even before that, uh, what I do next is I usually just go through all the different modes just to see what I vibe with. It's also very hard if you don't have this kind of specific mind to see what you're seeing and then interpret it as the final image. Going into 99% of my photos, I have a vision in my head. Whether that is what the completed look looks like is debatable, but if you don't have the ability to see a photo before it's done, it's going to be very difficult to do the to do the process that I do, which is kind of just go through and see what looks best in my mind. I'm so bad at explaining things, I literally don't know why you people want me to do tutorials, but here we are. And then for this photo, what I decided looked best is difference. Where'd that go? There it is, which looks ridiculous right now. I get it. And then I like to play around with the opacity just because I feel you're not really connecting that this is one image. So I'm just going to bring it down to around like 50 ish, I would say. Like you see how just the colors behind him just kind of pop a little bit more. It looks like it's shining through him. And then the fill, I'm going to bring it maybe like. 65 75 just just for funsies <laughs> uh and next we're gonna do my favorite thing which i've been doing in literally like all of my photos lately it's a gradient map so let's go to that it's just this little icon right here in adjustments and of course that one makes it red which I'm not really into um you have your basics you know that cool stuff blues which i tend to use a lot not that this is the case for this photo but if you ever get a gradient map that's like inverted like this a little tip it's pretty easy it's just right here it's just reverse it's simple but a lot of people don't realize it's there that's why I'm here to show you okay so I like this gradient map but I don't like the um inverse of it so I'm just gonna flip it and then I'm gonna go into it and just literally just f around there's literally no rhyme or reason to what I do ever <laughs> it's literally just messing around with things and seeing what's good like I don't like the pink in it so I think I'm gonna delete the pink a uh, little too intense. I don't think I like the black either. Yeah, I like that more. It's all my work is just a trying, a trial and error is the word I'm looking for. That's literally all my work. And then I'm going to end up with something like this. I ended up leaving in the pink just a little bit, but I'm going to get rid of it later on because I do think it adds a little pop, but not in the way that I want just yet. Okay, next what I usually do is go to the hue and saturation right here and fuck around again. The blue it started at is a little too blue. I don't know how to describe it. I just want to make it a little bit more like 
this and then you know me i love color love color bursts we're gonna blast that shit up not obviously that much but let's give it like a good 10 i'd say and you just see the before and after of just that it's subtle but all the little subtle parts that i do really make the whole look pop now i'm going to go to my exposure which is right here it just needs a little bit more when I bring the exposure up, do you see how it gets rid of the pink parts of the gradient map? So that's the original, and the more I bring it up, the more it gets rid of, which is what I want to see. I'm going to bring the exposure about 30, I'd say. Ah, you could type it in, but I never do. <laughs> and obviously, we're getting somewhere. As you can see, it's starting to... Oh, didn't mean to do that. It's starting to get those kind of contrasty points that I have in my final image. And we're going to keep going from there. One of my favorite tools in Photoshop is this little guy right here, Levels. I don't know if it's just me, but I found that in a lot of tutorials I've personally watched because, you know, we all start somewhere. Not a lot of people use this tool, and I don't know why because it is great. <laughs> what, it, what it does is it just really makes things pop. So if you want to give it more of highlights, it does that. If you want to give it more darker, which is what we're going to do, it goes that. This is just a balance. Do I know how to describe things? No. But am I going to keep doing it? Yes. So we're going to give just the blacks a little bit more oomph, bring it to like a two or three. Eh, we'll leave it at two. As you see, it really didn't make a difference. If you, it's, I don't know how it's going to translate, but here is where you mostly see it. So this is without and this is with. It literally just up here makes it just the tiniest bit darker. And that's what I mean when I'm saying like it's very minuscule editing. But to me personally, I think it makes a big difference later on. And we're going to bring this down just a little bit. I got a text message. And just once again, I've already edited this photo. Um, it's been about two months since I edited this photo. So I'm obviously leaving out the parts where I did trial and error because I already have the final photo. I know what I'm recreating. But making art like this is not linear. It's not, oh, I do this step next, then I do that step. It is very trust your eye and what you think. I'm always editing a photo. Then I take up like a, like a 10 minute break to an hour and then I come back and I'm like, scrap that let's completely redo it i don't want anyone watching this tutorial to be like oh my god megan has it all figured out she literally just looks at a photo and just throws it together i don't it's a lot of you know back and forth like oh does this look better does that look better that kind of stuff now i'm realizing a mistake i made um i should be done with this photo in terms of editing this is what i did last time but i realized the background which is that that long exposure one i showed you i originally had it edited slightly color wise in lightroom which i didn't do here so we're just going to fix that but you know we can always go back so we're just going to do um a saturation layer just on the bottom bring the lightness down and you see as i bring it down jack comes up more which is what i was looking for that looks more like the final image we'll go a little bit in curves maybe bring it that way Bring it up a little. Again, just trial and error. And then you're going to save it and you're done. <laughs> I know this tutorial was really easy. There isn't really much craziness to what I do. I know it always looks crazy when it's done, but it really doesn't take that long to... I literally have no idea what I'm saying. I'm just talking. Literally, don't put me in front of a camera. I'll just talk about non nonsense um yeah that's it for this tutorial i think this is a very short video and i apologize if i didn't explain everything as i should i'm having a very manic day yeah i was gonna film another tutorial today but i literally don't think i have the concentration to sit down and film it so anyways i love you guys so much let me know what more to oh I started a newsletter. Uh, you can go to my website and just put in your uh, email. I'm going to be releasing tutorials a week to a month early on the newsletter, exclusive for those people. It's free. You literally just have to sign up. And every month, the first of every month, I'm going to send you guys a little update what I'm doing, exclusive tutorials, discounts, little updates like that. My camera wanted to be a dick. Anyway, so if you could sign up for that, I'll put the link down below in the caption. In the, in the not a caption, what is that called? The description. I'm a YouTuber. Uh, yeah don't know what I was gonna say anyways thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me this like last two years on social media has been insane absolutely insane and I don't know what to say as a thank you so thank you